So what's colder, evaporative cooling or reverse cycle? Uh, that's a great question and it really depends on where you live and how you live in the house. Um, if it's really, really hot, uh, reverse cycle just will not be able to get, it won't be able to run for long enough to continually cycle that air down to get to a temperature that you're really comfortable in or what you're trying to achieve. It'll make it relatively comfortable, um, but it really won't, if you, it doesn't matter what you punch into your controller, if you're trying to get to 19 degrees, it just won't get there. Evaporative cooling won't work with really high humidity. So in the tropics, you'll never see an evaporative cooler in Cairns. Um, you really won't see it too much along the coast, but you'll see it in hot, dry areas like Canberra, uh, Melbourne, South Australia and Perth. If you think of reverse cycle air, air conditioning, it's um, very similar to a fridge. It's cooling the air down and continually cycling that, that air down to be cooler. The difference is evaporative cooling. That's all about relative humidity and about a cooling effect. So you're increasing the humidity in the, in the air when it's hot and dry and you're creating a cooling effect in the home and allowing that air to pass in and blow the hot air out of the house. So it really depends on where you live. If you're in Canberra or Melbourne and it's 44 degrees and it's really dry, evaporative cooling will work fantastically and give you a really nice cooling effect in the home. If you're in Sydney and it's 36 degrees and 80% humidity, you're not gonna get a cooling effect from increasing the humidity. Uh, so in that instance, reverse cycle will give you a better result. Uh, but if you're in a hot, dry climate uh, west of the divide, then evaporative cooling is going to give you a better result. So it really depends on where you live and how you live in your home.